Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear students, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome back to our class of cell biology, genetics and evolution. And we were discussing genetics, various chapters of genetics. We have discussed the Mendelian inheritance, the laws of Mendel. We have discussed sex determination and in the last video we discussed sex linkage or sex linked inheritance. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss linkage. Linkage and crossing over. As we all know that each and every organism carries a definite number of chromosomes. The chromosomes in individuals, in individuals of various species, they have a definite number of chromosomes. Like in our case, we have 46. 46 in humans, 23 pairs. 44 chromosomes or 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair is the sex chromosome. Similarly, Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly, has four pairs or eight chromosomes and we also know that genes or the DNA uh, genes are carried carried on the chromosomes so genes are present on the chromosomes the chromosomes carry the genes and as we know that the number of genes it exceeds the number of chromosomes. In humans, the number of chromosomes is 46, whereas the number of genes is around 30,000. Now, if the chromosomes, they carry the genes, it means that a single chromosome would carry more than one gene because 46 chromosome number is far less as compared to the total number of genes. Since the number of genes far exceeds the number of chromosomes, so that means that each chromosome must carry several genes or many genes. And you can simply uh, make a calculation, divide this number by 46 and you get the idea that how many genes uh, would be there on one chromosome. Uh, a flat rate uh, you will get for all the chromosomes. So, it means that one chromosome would carry several genes or many genes and when this chromosome would enter a gamete, it would carry all the genes with it. Wherever this particular chromosome would go, it would take all the genes with it and they, uh, all those genes would enter that particular gamete where this chromosome enters. Now, all the genes that are present in this particular chromosome, they are now linked. And this is what we call linkage. Because you cannot separate them and the genes cannot move individually. It is not possible for a gene, for example, this one or this one or this one, to enter another gamete. They are bound to travel with these particular chromosomes the chromosome which is carrying a set of genes so that set of gene would travel or would enter the gamete with that particular chromosome the gene or the genes do not have a choice they are linked they are carried by a particular chromosomes and they cannot move on their own and this is what we call linkage We started our discussion uh, with Mendelian inheritance and Mendel presented two very basic laws of inheritance, law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Now law of independent assortment uh, simply states that if two pairs of alleles are followed in a cross, two pairs. So each pair asserts independently of the other pair. 
two pairs say we have uh, just uh, like we discussed in case of P tall and red and dwarf and white. Now this particular pair, the alleles for tallness, they would not affect the alleles for the red color. They would assert independently and each pair would enter. Uh, it is just possible that these two alleles might separate or might come together again. So uh, none of the uh, alleles, they affect each other as far as their movement into the gametes is concerned. Now, suppose instead of genes now we talk about the chromosomes now we are following now we are following uh, two pairs of chromosomes now when gametes will be formed so these two pairs they would assert independently of each other none of these pair would affect the other pair as far as uh, their assortment in different gametes is concerned, movement in different gametes is concerned. So it means that the behavior of the genes and the behavior of the uh, chromosomes, uh, it is almost the same. Uh, it would have been perfectly the same uh, uh, behavior of both the uh, alleles, genes and the chromosomes if we had one gene and one chromosome, just like one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, one gene and one chromosomes. Then there would have been independent assortment in all the genes because one chromosome, uh, a single chromosome is carrying only one allele. So 100% assortment in all the genes. But we have just seen that the number of genes exceeds the number of chromosomes. So that means that one chromosome would carry a large number of genes and they would travel, they would go to the gamete along with that particular chromosomes. They cannot assert independently. So if you have been following me up to this point, it might have occurred to you that the law of independent assortment, the second law of mental, is not universal. You cannot apply it in all the cases, in all the genes. Uh, law of independent assortment holds true when we think of or when we considering the genes which are located on different chromosomes. So genes on this chromosomes and on this chromosome, they would assert independently because they are on different chromosomes and they can easily assert independently. But what about these genes which are located on this particular chromosomes? Can they assert independently our genes on these chromosomes and similarly on other chromosomes? The answer is obviously a big no, it is not possible. So what does it mean? that because of this particular phenomenon what we call linkage or because of the linked genes when genes are present on the same chromosome the independent assortment is not universal. Mendel was lucky as the seven traits that he considered during uh, his crosses uh, most of them they were located the genes of those traits were located on different chromosomes. So he obtained perfect assortment results and he put forward that law. But as we can clearly judge and see that linkage, uh, because of linkage, the law of independent assortment cannot be 100% universal. And this is, uh, that was discovered soon after the rediscovery of the Mendel's work. Mendel work was rediscovered. If you remember, we discussed a very brief history of Mendel when we were discussing the Mendelian inheritance. Uh, so in 1906, after the uh, rediscovery of the Mendel's work, uh, two scientists, uh, Bitson and Punnett, they were also making crosses in pea plant and they found out that certain characters they are not following the law of independent assortment and what they found out say uh, there were two pairs of alleles 
A and B, B. And the recessive are these small lowercase a and b. Now what they found out that according, uh, according to the law of independent assortment, these two pairs of alleles would assort independently. But they found out that when these two dominant alleles were together in a parent, they tended to remain together. They would not separate that is in the F1 and in the F2, uh, as if these two pairs are glued together, they are joined together, and they did not separate in F1 and F2. And obviously, it was very strange for them that why these two pairs of alleles uh, are not getting assorted independently. So what they did, that uh, they made crosses and separated uh, these two genes, and now they made a cross of this sort that uh, these two alleles were separated. So they made another cross in which the two parents, one was the dominant A and recessive B, and other was recessive A and dominant B. Now they have separated the two alleles. Now they are entering into the cross from two different parents. Now this is another parent and this is another parent. In this case, they have found out that these two uh, dominant alleles are these two recessive alleles which remain together in this particular cross, they now would not come together. They would remain separate. So this A and uh, dominant A and recessive B would remain together and this recessive A and B would remain together. But this particular pair and this one, the recessive ones, they would not come together. Once separated, they would remain separate. And when they were together, they would remain together and they would not separate. So they name these two phenomena. The first one, coupling, that is the dominant alleles and the recessive pairs, they would remain together. They would not separate in F1 and F2 and so forth. But once they were separated, they would not come together and they named it repulsion. So they said that there are two... Uh, things in these particular classes. One is coupling and other is repulsion. If the dominant alleles are together and the recessive are together, they would remain together. And if they were separated and they entered the cross from different parents, then they would remain separate and they would not come together and this is repulsion. They were unable to explain this phenomenon that why this coupling and repulsion is taking place. Why these alleles went together, they remain together and when separated, they remain separate and do not come together. This mystery was finally resolved few years later by T.H. Morgan, Thomas Herbert Morgan, the famous geneticist, uh, who was a very successful uh, researcher. So. T.H. Morgan put forward the idea of linkage. So he explained this phenomenon in the terms of uh, linkage and he stated that uh, these two alleles, uh, when they are together, they remain together and once separated, they remain separate and do not come together because they are located on the same chromosomes. That is, these two alleles are linked. Since they are linked, they are carried on the same chromosome, so they would not separate. But once they were separated and they were present on the separate chromosomes, so now this particular uh, pair, they were on the same chromosome, and in the next class, as we have just seen above, and this particular pair, they were on the same chromosomes. So now since they were together and they were together, uh, they would remain together, and this particular pair, since they were now on the separate chromosomes, they cannot be made to get together. These two pairs, the dominant ones and the recessive ones, they cannot be made to come together. So they would remain separate because these alleles are linked. So uh, linkage uh, is very common in living organisms because the number of chromosomes is small and the number of genes is large. So always a chromosome carries a large number of genes so all the genes present on chromosomes, they are said to be linked genes, and this phenomenon is known as linkage. So uh, this was an introduction to linkage, this particular video. In the next video, uh, we are going to, inshallah, see a cross uh, that how uh, 
this linkage phenomenon affects the inheritance of genes when they are present on the same chromosomes, how they are inherited, transferred, transmitted from parents to offspring, and how we come to know that this result is because of linkage. This is what we are going to find out in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.